Aloha. Happy Thanksgiving week for any of you out there celebrating. Hopefully, if you're alone or with one or eight people that are safe and COVID appropriate, may you have a day to be grateful for things in your life, things that you have right now, because it always changes. So today's podcast, this is my 57th podcast, and I'm calling this my sacred mirror. Now, any of you that have followed me with my other podcasts, I I talk about this dynamic a little in uh, one or two of my other podcasts, but I'm going to talk about this. How mirroring works. We have mirror neurons that give us the ability to see a, a stranger crying in their car. And we feel a moment of their sadness as if it's happening to us. Or we see someone on TV eating an ice cream or something tasty. And as we're watching it, we, we actually can taste that as if, as if we're eating it. This, is, this becomes the foundational technique in marketing. Show someone healthy and running with their new shoes on, and we can imagine through our mirroring component how that feels, and we buy those new shoes. We believe we will look that way and feel great longer than the duration of that commercial. With mirroring, it's immediate. When we learn by seeing in others what we cannot see in ourselves, be it admiration or aversion of specific traits in other people, as the Buddhists say, we are all we are all that exists and everything else we see and experience is a projection of our mind. And that is talking about that the, we all have a filter of how we perceive things and we could only see something, we could only notice something regardless if it's pleasant or unpleasant because we have a reference to it inside of ourselves. The inside world reflects the outside world. That is a mirroring in itself also. So this this concept is uh, showing in various patterns. So often when we observe things, often when observing others that show a not so desirable behavior, our aversion comes up and judgment or distancing occurs. In those moments, it takes a fairly conscious person to identify that the extreme change one is feeling is so strong because it is our own behavior that we dislike and judge. And we see this through the mirroring effect of the other. Now, when we are attracted to someone and we admire characteristics in them, we can also know consciously that, oh, I recognize that behavior because I do that or I know that. When we like someone, be it a conscious or un, on an unconscious level, we begin reflective listening where we repeat what they say or what they meant so that they know we're listening to them and seeing them. In our actions, we are showing that they matter and we care about them. Mimicking a person's body language is another technique to bring comfort. This helps with alignment and syncing you up with that person. It creates a feeling of acceptance. For instance, if you're seated next to someone and you fold your arms a certain way, and then they fold their arms a certain way, or you lean into a person and they lean in as you are, or they slightly tilt their head and you mimic them tilting their head, not in an obvious way, but in a subtle way. Some people do this without realizing it. I watch people together. I watch how they talk and they actually start to mirror each other's behavior because they're flirting or because they're attracted to the person. So, 
I remembered being young. When I was young, I didn't like it when other kids copied from me. And I remember telling my mother, I don't like it when they, when they cheat, is what I was thinking, when they're copying what I'm writing. And she said, copying is the highest form of flattery. Mockery is the highest form of flattery, is basically what she's saying. So another point is chalked up for these mirror neurons and how our brain works and processes. Okay, so it's time for a Miley story. When my daughter started preschool, she started at three and she went part time. But I got into this habit of telling her bedtime stories. And we had four animal characters, and each had a specific personality trait. And they came with different challenges and gifts. For instance, we had Claire the horse, and she was the responsible one, more the, the authority type. Yet oftentimes, she didn't want change or to experience an adventure without a lot of caution or worry. And we had another character named Wilbur the pig. And Wilbur liked everybody. He could communicate to anyone that he met along his way, yet sometimes he wasn't very wise or discerning, and he would get his feelings hurt a lot. So my daughter would come home from school and tell me about a conflict she had with her best friend. And all the details that night, she'd tell me what happened. So when I started to tell her her bedtime story, I would have the same dynamic in the story. So this was since she was about three and a half, four. Children are bright at an early age, so this worked. So when she was about that young, she always would see from the story I wrote between the animal characters that had the same thing that happened to her. And she would say, that's what happened with me and Julia today. And I would say, yes, it was. And how did they work it out? And she'd tell me what I told her in the story. And I said, does that sound like something you'd want to do? And she'd get it, like I'd see her little mind get that light bulb, that awareness spark up. I was so proud of her that she could see that. So, this is how this works. As humans, this is a main factor of how our mind processes. It sees external events outside of ourselves through a person or a circumstance and we're more detached, so therefore, we're not emotional. So, when it's, a, it's about us, when we're taking it personal, we are not able, the emotions make it cloudy, and we cannot see the dynamic of what's happening, like the chemical response, the uh, alchemy that's happening, the teachings behind it. So seeing through another person or something outside of ourselves, we have more perspective. We can see the right thing to do. We could see right action. I find that I use this often with my family, friends, and definitely with my clients when I do counseling sessions. I listen to the current traumas that are happening in their life and I hear their histories of their past traumas and I gently bring together the past into the present pattern so they can have an understanding that this has repeated itself. This is a, a mirroring of a wound, of a pain, of something that happened before. So, why do we continue repeating the same mistakes? But we choose different people, different circumstances. Why do we do that? Because when we bring light, 
or awareness to our old wounds and with understanding as adults, we have choices, yet it's easy to fall into the same groove or hole that's familiar that we've done over and over again. So without help and proper guidance to forge a new path and a new way of being, this is impossible to break. Having an understanding that this is how the brain processes, this is one of the main functions of this mirroring neuron, can help you understand how to move through it. The saying, no man is an island. So without being biblical, this phrase has a lot of power to it. It means to remember what we need to be healthier and happier in our lives. We need connections. We need others to show us what we can't see by ourselves. We all have moments of blind spots. When we are repeating relationship dynamics that are not so healthy and we're feeling lonely and unhappy, it's important to reflect to either have a trusted friend or family member or a counselor to deeply listen and offer constructive feedback. This will add enough of a broader view and a new perspective outside of your own thinking that it can help you to break these old patterns once and for all. Noticing when we see specific qualities in others that we're drawn to or want to push away. This is an indicator that this is a potent direction of personal growth that with insight, with a deeper understanding, we can unlock a greater awareness. We can understand why we feel so strongly about it and why we feel as if it runs us. It runs a course of its own instead of being able to clearly see the dynamic. I've had this in my past when I was younger where I would feel like I'm on this track and I'm just kind of going at a fast speed. And I didn't realize what that feeling was, but I've had clients tell me that. I've had good friends tell me that same thing. I just met this person, and it's going way faster than I wanted. And again, this is a mirroring effect. This means that we're being pulled into this, this unconscious groove that we're familiar with. So on a conscious level, when we feel pulled or pushed... So notice when anything draws your attention or repels your attention, just clearly see the patterns. See, hmm, wait, Samana told me to notice when I have a strong draw towards something or someone or an aversion towards something or someone, that this is coming up from within myself, that this is an aspect of myself and they or the situation is just mirroring it. If you could understand that much, through conflict that reoccurs often, we can see, although we will create new people in our scenario, so it sometimes takes us a while because we're distracted by this pretty new shiny toy, this new enticing person that has all of my attention. What happens is the same sticky situation is happening over and over. We are the only common denominator in every one of these dynamics. So it's the same mistake different face. We're the same person, different face in front of us. So why do we repeat the same mistakes and negative patterns with these new faces? 
again, when we notice the charge, when we notice the energy that pulls us or pushes us, and identify in that moment, it's time to step back and gain perspective, to consciously put the brakes on and know this is time for reflection, that this is an aspect of yourself you are not conscious of. So we want this to surface. We want to bring out understanding and acceptance. But with old frames, the wound is so deep and it is hard to see it. What we want is we want to heal and be transformed. So once and for all, when it feels like a relationship is either, either moving at a faster rate than your comfort zone or we're getting into the same conflict theme with many people. So you keep having the same argument or you keep hitting the same wall with a few different people in your life, in your day-to-day -day life. This is your inner self wanting consciousness wanting awareness to happen. This is an indication of an unconscious pattern resurfacing. The good news is with enough of a, of a willingness for change, having an openness to experience a new outcome and having a tr trusted guidance from a skilled counselor or friend, you will be consciously creating a world that is closer to meeting more of the needs that you have now. So sometimes we carry similar needs throughout our life. We all want to feel safe and loved and accepted and seen and heard. So we all want those. But sometimes deeper needs that have been neglected when we were younger and some with trauma will play out in our present life with new players in the play, in a sense, because we're at a point, we're more stable inside, and we have gained more clarity and awareness that we're ready to look at it from a new perspective. Your personal relationships will be more fulfilling, connected, and integritous. I promise this. We're all in this classroom of life. We're healing our wounds. We're bringing light to unconscious patterns. Yet to change the outcome, we need to change the response. That is all within our power. Self-reflection is always a necessary daily tool. Use it to check in with yourself and see, are all the days mixed together and time is moving fast? Like I've had different points in my life where I looked when I was younger and I'm like, wait, how is this like already, it was just March, how is it already November? Like if that's happening, I wanna ask you, are you claiming moments? Are you taking moments? to notice your life, to feel your life, to reflect about what matters to you and what you're feeling? Are you being pulled in any specific direction or to a specific person, like a drug-induced experience where it's intoxicating? We do not want that blind love experience. We want a conscious we want to feel happiness, to feel joy, to feel pleasure. But we want to do it where it's slower, where we're taking conscious breaths that, where we're taking a conscious step, where I'm aware of my needs or I'm feeling a little fragile or my old friend, my fear and doubt is creeping in. Oh, how I'll never be alone because I'm so familiar with my doubt and fear. You have been with me forever. How about viewing it like that? And when it comes up just enough that you're aware of it, 
and it's hard to move the next step, just remember that you can take your life into your own hands through moments of awareness. You can slow the track down. You can pull back to get perspective, not to shut down, not to ghost anyone because there are feelings involved. We need to be conscious of our actions. Yet to be aware of your needs, aware of how your actions affect those around you, that is imperative to know that. It's not just about you, you, you. You need to also see, when I behave this way, how does it affect my friend? How does it affect my partner? And notice, am I checking in with them enough? Are their needs part of this too? Life is about choice in every moment. I had another conversation with a friend who was distraught due to a disconnect in one of their relationships. And I reminded I said, our only positive play is to reflect our own behavior and ask ourselves, was I in integrity? Was I authentic? Were there any parts of my actions or words or my energy that I wished I would have done differently? And after reflection, after looking at that, because when you feel bad with a conflict with someone because of that mirror, mirror neuron, because I'm feeling bad, I'm not going to say that person pulled away from me. That person is making me feel bad. They can. They are an aspect of it. But the power comes when you look to see, what did I do? Were my actions authentic and vulnerable and real? Or was there more we can share? I always say I'm a reformed, a recovering control freak. How about that? And because of that, I used to come in with all this juice, all this excitement and passion and inspiration, and I would just blast into the room. And anyone that was meek or not, so strong in themselves in that moment, I was like, uh, what just happened? And it was all about me and how good I was feeling. It felt so good to express and that freedom and that flow. And then I realized there were many relationships that I was, um, that I was limiting my experience with because they were either too overwhelmed by my intensity or they were too timid to speak up or say I really like hearing your ideas and could I share mine because the bottom line is when you're in any type of relationship be it business or roommates or partnership or family that that's two parties or more involved and it's really about learning their view it's not about the loudest one it's not about the squeaky wheel gets the grease. It's not the loudest one. It's everybody has a right to show up as they, as they do. They may not be so articulate. It may not flow. It might not even make sense because they're a little, uh, maybe they're a little intimidated to speak in front of someone so strong. So understanding your, owning your shit really, and understanding your missteps with humility and then when you present it to that person you're having conflict with, to own everything, to own after reflecting that I really wished I didn't have an expectation with what I was sharing with you. I really wished it didn't matter that I wanted everybody's approval or that I wanted everyone to agree with me. And it did unfortunately, and that's what that little extra energy was. So what I wanted to share was I was excited about my idea, and I also want to hear others' ideas, because when we're just a speck of the whole tapestry, 
and everybody in the tapestry gets to be seen and has a voice. What a beautiful, beautiful picture that is. It's like all the specks together makes so much more than we could ever do on our own. So, when we are vulnerable and we make amends to our not-so-proud-of-ourselves behavior, we are admitting we are human, we make mistakes. When we bring unconscious behavior that was habitual to and clearly have remorse because we see it now instead of what's their problem? Why did they roll their eyes? Why did they walk away? Why haven't they texted me back? Instead of there's something wrong with the other person, how about looking, reflecting? What was the mirror neuron? What was the energy that was within you that you were emanating that you can just fine tune it? Make it a little more conscious, a little more considerate. This is how I prefer to show up. I want to really be fully, authentically who I am in every moment. And I'm not looking for approval from others, but isn't it wonderful when I'm seen and heard? Isn't it wonderful when they're aware of, yeah, that's a great thing. I, I, I see it. That's exciting. And then they say, have you considered adding this? And then the collaboration starts. And then it's wonderful. And in that moment of your showing up and being authentic, you're breaking old patterns. And certainly you have a story for your past that this came from before, that this was reenacted and occurred before. You are the common denominator. You need to remain the focus of investigation. And only if you see their behavior, if it's only them you're looking at, then I want you to do these steps. If you're at a consciousness that you have a conflict with someone and right away you start squawking about their behavior because that's where you're at. And again, there's no shame in it. It's just understanding where you're at and accepting that. I want you to do these steps. So first, look at where and when you experienced that behavior before. That's step one. Second, in looking at what that person did, ask yourself or journal this, how did it make you feel when they did that? And be honest and write until there's no more to write. And three, this gets a little juicier. The question is, do you have or have you exhibited that same behavior either now or in the past? that you're complaining about with them. Again, the mirror neurons are activated. We now have a clue of how they work, and it's up to you to do your personal reflection. Look under the carpet, do the deeper work, and bless the people in our lives, even through the deepest challenges that they are teaching us, that they give a shit enough to hold that mirror up and we can feel those uncomfortable feelings and we can look where those feelings started and how it makes us feel and then we can let go of our own judgments and go into forgiveness and thank them for that because when all of that personal work happens, I guarantee it will not feel so bad anymore. I guarantee once you see it all, you will not repeat the pattern again. And if you begin to, you won't step too far into it. You're like, oh, I know how this feels. I'm doing this again. Let's back that up. So remember that the way we learn is we're aware of this habitual pattern of ours. And sometimes we see what we did wrong that we weren't proud of 
I don't know, a couple weeks or a couple months later or days later. And that's the first step, is at least we can see what we did wrong. The second stage of consciousness, of breaking patterns, is in the middle of doing the behavior you're aware of, that doesn't feel right as I'm speaking that, or I don't really mean that, or I need to just stop, take a breath and back that up a little. Okay, this is what I meant. And the third stage of awareness of breaking patterns is before you're about to say or do the behavior, you're aware of the desire that pull I was talking about to do it, but you're conscious enough to stop that and you don't go forward with that. That is quite the juicy path. I wish that for all of us to be there as reflection for each other, to bring out our best selves, to have compassion when someone is making amends or saying, I'm so sorry, and to not judging others because it's all within us. And again, anyone who needs counseling, guess what I do? So I do Zoom sessions. We do one-hour sessions. I was $100 an hour. I dropped it to 75 I will do a sliding scale, and I could also do weekly sessions four in a row for 250. So contact me, 808-283-7587. I am Central Time in good old Austin, Texas. I hope your holidays are great. The next time I'm inspired, I will post again. I love it when you share this material, when you comment. Text me, email me, samana at spaluna.com. And yeah, somehow get back to me that it, it moved you or you have questions about it or topics you're interested in. I'm here to help wake up the planet and bring peace and freedom one person at a time. Blessings all.